Hey everyone, welcome back to part 4 in my Font Forge Masterclass series. If you haven't already seen parts 1 through 3, I would recommend you watch those first. I'll put links to all of them in the description, and I'll put a card for the first tutorial in the series up in the corner. Alright, so today we're going over finalizing and exporting your font, and there's a couple of main things that you need to do. Um, the first thing is check for some main errors. We're going to do this by uh, pushing Control A to select all of our glyphs. We're going to go to Element, Validation, Find Problems. Now each of these boxes should be deselected by default, although it does save your previous selection. So the main things that we're going to want to check for is open paths, intersecting paths, and that check that outermost paths are clockwise. Open paths means that every every character is a complete loop. There's no gaps in the line. Otherwise, your operating system won't be able to display it properly. Intersecting paths, that will also cause some problems, so we want to check for that. We also want to check that the outermost paths are clockwise. Otherwise, once again, the operating system might not display the font correctly. Um, all of these other options for checking for problems um, can mostly just be ignored. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click OK here. And it looks like the glyph A has paths that intersect one another. Now, this is probably one of the hardest problems to troubleshoot because it's at first very difficult to see which points are actually causing the problem. What I like to do is deselect all the points, then click one and drag it a little bit, see if it moves, see if there's another point overlapping it, and then do this for each separate point. Okay, that one looks fine. I think it might be the top that's causing the issue. Yep, see, there were two right on top of each other. If you zoom in, you can actually see that. And I'm gonna select one of those points, and it's right here, and I'm gonna click Merge. And as you can see, it just deleted that, although it added um, some curve points here, which I don't want in this case, so I'm just gonna snap those back to the corners. Figuring out intersections is probably one of the hardest parts of exporting because it causes the most issues. All right, now that that's fixed, we'll just go ahead and click next. And it looks like that was the only error in this font. Now, oftentimes you're gonna have more than that, but each time just click fix and uh, try and go through the problems. It can't fix intersections for you, but all the other issues it will be able to fix just fine. All right, so looks like our font is already primed for exporting, so that's perfect. Um, I'll just close this window here and what we're gonna do is go to file Generate fonts. This is how we're gonna export our font Now the two main choices that we have here are true type and open type now open type isn't as widely supported Although it is very widely supported. It has a lot more font features and is overall just more advanced uh, True type is a little bit older. It's natively used by Windows and it's a very popular choice. Um, choosing between these is mostly preference, although I would personally recommend that you use open type unless what you're exporting for only accepts true type. So I'm gonna just choose open type here and it'll, it'll actually validate before saving to make sure that there aren't any errors. So we'll just name it. I'll just call this test and it will save as an OTF file, which is an open type font. And then we're gonna go ahead and just click generate. All right, perfect, our font has just exported. Now for longer fonts, it might take longer and you might run into a, a couple of errors if you didn't check through everything, um, but we're gonna go ahead and just test it now. Um, installing the font will be different depending on the system, but it should be similar to how it is here. Um, go ahead and navigate to your font file. Now if you double click it, it will probably most likely try and open it up in FontForge, um, which isn't maybe what you want to do. So go ahead and right click it, and if you choose open with, um, there might be a font previewer application of some type depending on your system. Mine is kfontview and you can see if I do that I can sort of preview what the font looks like. Um, now you might also be able to from that right click menu be able to install the font or maybe from your previewer you might be able to um, install the font. Although I, it does just depend on your system once again so I'll leave that part to you. Alright that just about wraps up how to finalize and export your font from FontForge. Now, this was going to be the last part in the series, but if you guys want to see how to do more features using FontForge and um, all of the things that are provided by the wonderful OpenType font format, I mean, just 
look at how many features are just in the single substitution category. Like, it's absolutely insane. I could never cover all of it, but if there's anything in spe specific that you want me to cover, maybe like contextual alternates or something like that, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave it a like, and if you're feeling especially nice, go ahead and subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys later.